What is up, everybody out there in Twitch? Uh, you are watching ESO Recap. This is episode number 11. I am Defatank. This episode is brought to you by Great Architect. Uh, for tonight, we've got a whole lot of information once again. Uh, so we need to get straight into this because there is a lot of stuff to cover without a doubt. So if everybody can save their questions um, towards the end of the stream, I'll let you guys ask any kind of questions you have about the content that I covered in this episode. So once again, save all your questions for the end, and I'll be glad to answer any kind of questions you guys have. To kickstart things off, i got quite a few quick points to go through, so let's get through these as quickly as possible. As everybody knows, new wave of beta invites has gone out uh, for this weekend, February the 28th through Sunday, March the 2nd. That starts at noon on Friday through 11.59 on Sunday. Uh, multiple gaming sites have uh, additional beta keys. If you have not gotten a beta key yet, you need to check out ElderScrollsOnline.com. Right there on the main page, there is a link showing uh, the streams for the weekend that's going to be doing a lot of streaming, including myself. Um, for whatever reason, they didn't put me on there. No big deal. But if you want to watch Elder Scrolls Online this weekend, there's going to be a ton of streams out there. And also below all of those streams, there are some sites that are giving away keys. They have a ton of them. Also, if you have friends that are in the beta that you know have been in beta, they have an additional key. Uh, so, you know, talk with them, see if they have an additional key. First set of questions that comes off is uh, Atman Coast from YouTube. It's uh, in regards to episode number nine. It was uh, about crafting. He asked, can you research more than one craft skill at a time? Example, blacksmith and clothing at the same time. Yes, you can um, research multiple skills like that, uh, re researching per crafting table, because each table has its own timer for researching. Uh, something that I wanted to mention and make sure that everybody's clear on it is you cannot research two traits simultaneously on a particular item. Example, in blacksmithing, if you started researching a chest trait, you can't start researching a second chest trait on that blacksmithing table until the first one has completed. So you got to let you know them go through. Now, if you have multiple the perk that gives you multiple uh, researches, say two or whatever, or three or whatever it goes up to, um, you could research a chest item and you could research like gloves or something in the blacksmithing table, just not too simultaneously on the same type of item. Next he asks, can you reset your HP, Magicka, Stamina points separate from your skills? Yes, there is a shrine uh, for each of those. Each cost gold. He asks, uh, when you reset skills, does the level of those skills reset? No. Whenever you put uh, a point back into a skill line that you had advanced and leveled up in, it's going to pick right up where it left off and continue to level. So that does not reset, and it's a good thing. We've got Rod, who uh, tossed a couple questions at me right before the stream came up. He says, um... Will, like a support role character, have the ability or option to soft target friendly characters for healing slash mitigation the same way that we can soft lock enemies? My response to that is healing is a lot of AoE uh, and cone heals. There are some heals that will hit a specific friendly, uh, but generally those types of heals are going to take into consideration of who needs the heal. For instance, uh, the lowest amount of health or whoever's closer to the healer or whatever. Uh, it's going to look at that stuff and that's how healing goes out for those targeted uh, healing abilities. As far as mitigation, to my knowledge I am not aware of any kind of misdirect. Uh, if we go back to WoW, you know the hunter had the misdirect to force the tank to get aggro. I'm not aware of anything like that. Um, if somebody knows of something, say something in chat and you know let me know. But I, I don't think there's anything like that in the uh, in the game. Next is how much effect will racial skill lines affect in-game performance? This is a very difficult question to answer. Uh, it's really really hard to measure the effect these racial skills are having, simply because of the broad range that 
people have to make their builds. I mean, there's tons of different builds out there, and you really got to utilize, you know, all of these skills together to make a build that is really good for you. So, to say that a certain racial is better than others, it, again, it's going to depend on how that player is playing their character and using it to their advantage. The uh, the mailbox, and I'm gonna go ahead and start the uh, the video for tonight because it's got a little bit of information in it. I had a question come up about the mailbox. So just how exactly does the mailbox work? This is something I've not shown yet, so I went ahead and put this section of video together to show you how the video uh, or how the mailbox actually works. You can access your mailbox by hitting the apostrophe key. You're going to have two different tabs. If you look up here in the top left, or top right, sorry, of the, the screen, you can see that there is a, uh, a mail icon and a little, like, uh, pin. It's up there in the top right. I don't think you can actually see that from what I can see on my XSplit. So if you can't see that, there is a couple of icons up there that will show um, the different tabs. So I apologize about the resizing. There is a resizing issue that I am seeing, so I apologize about that. But you can switch back and forth between the two tabs. One is inbox, the other is for sending. And that's what you're looking at right now is the sending tab. Inside the sending tab, you simply just type in who you want it to go to, the subject. You can type in a custom message in the box that I'm typing in right now. You can also select to send gold or COD, which is cash on delivery, which is right below that. And that's basically either going to send gold to somebody or you're going to request that whoever you're sending that mail to sends you gold back. So uh, that's pretty much how the mailbox works. It's pretty straightforward. Um, while this is running, I do want to try to fix this issue if we can. I changed some monitors out before this stream went up. And this one actually is a little bit bigger. There we go. Now you guys can see everything like you're supposed to be able to see. Again, I apologize about the issue. We'll fix it on the fly. There we go. All right, we're good now. Moving on. Your feedback to Zenimax. It matters, people. I want to urge you guys to please make sure that you are giving feedback this weekend to Zenimax. They, they really need it. Not just you know negative feedback and hate of this needs to be fixed, this needs to be done, I don't like this. You know, if you really, really like something in the game and you think that it's just great, tell them. Say, hey, I like this. This was really good. You know, Zenimax reads all of this feedback and they appreciate, you know, knowing whenever they're doing something right just as much as they appreciate us telling them when they're doing something wrong. So, you know, use the feedback slash feedback. If you find a problem slash bug, use both of those. Main points for episode 11. Participants in this beta weekend, you're going to get a special pet monkey. Uh, if you missed that, it's also on the main website. It's a, just a little monkey pet. Uh, I've not seen it yet. It looks pretty cool, um, but we'll see what he's like whenever we get to it. This build that we're on this weekend for the beta, all right, let me stress that, the beta is .171. It's pretty much the exact same build that we had last beta uh, with a few updates to stability. Um, I know a lot of you have been hearing some stuff about PTS, and I'm going to cover that in just a second about what it is. The PTS is a more advanced uh, build, but uh, it, it's a closed group that's doing it. So just what is PTS? What does it stand for? Well, it stands for Play Test Server. Some people say it's Public Test Server, Private Test Server. It stands for Play Test Server. That's what Zoss is calling it. Like I said, it is being used by a very limited amount of testers. 
it's been kept very quiet up until now we've been given some authorization to talk about the PTS stream the PTS show what we've been doing you know everybody's been really great at keeping this thing on caps uh, or under a cap and doing some really hardcore testing uh, to get betas ready we, we've been testing a lot of back-end stuff so again you're going to be able to stream you can stream this weekend you can record video and you can take screenshots I'm going to pause the video right here because I've got to go over the Imperial skills. What you just seen a few minutes ago was me going through my Imperial on the PTS. The Imperial is a neutral race. It can choose any of the three alliances that it wants to align itself to. It's not forced anywhere. Uh, again, if you pre-order the game, you're going to be able to do any race in any alliance. So you can make any race part of any alliance. Whether you're going to be able to do that after launch, we don't know yet. But as it stands right now, no. Uh, the Imperial is a human type race. Uh, some of the racial skills here, this is what you're looking at right now. The first one is Shield Affinity. It grants one handed and shield an XP boost, 15% XP boost to one handed and shield. The next one is Toughness. It increases the max hit points. Next, conditioning is max stamina increased and red diamond, which is uh, melee attacks that the Imperial does, has a 10% ch chance to restore hit points. So that's some pretty good passives. OP, eh, we'll just have to see. But they are a pretty good stat. What you're looking at right now is PTS recorded game footage. This is the stuff that you can expect to see coming and pay really close attention to this first person view because you can see the screen shaking the whenever I'm making contact with the sword it's get it's more uh, tuned up so that it feels more realistic so if you really watch the screen shaking and whenever I hit you can see that stuff shake and the weapon colliding and pulling through these monsters that's a really great change um, Something else is crafting changes. There is now a refine tab in crafting. There is no more going to extraction and then going to refine. Okay, you're going to have a refine tab. It's the first tab you come to. So if you want to take your materials, refine them, you know, you, that's going to be your first tab when you go into creation and on down the line. There is NPC collision in version 0.18 in the PTS. What is NPC collision? It is exactly what it says. Your character will collide with NPC uh, non-playable characters and monsters, so you cannot walk through them anymore. Next thing is Dark Fishers. Uh, I think the first person that said anything about this was probably Force, if I had to guess. He brought up Dark Fishers. I've had the pleasure of seeing two of them so far. They are really cool. If you heard just now that dark anchor noise, the, the horn, that's exactly what the dark fisher does. It will open a little small portal above the character at random. You're going to see some minions come out of it. You're going to defeat those minions. A couple more is going to come out, and there's a pretty difficult little boss that comes out of there. And you kill it, the portal closes up. So that's something new about dark fishers. They're really cool and um, they're intended for solo or small groups. I'm going to pause the video at this section too while I finish up the rest of .18 build and then we're going to get into the last sections of what you're about to see. Next, Dark Anchors. They are now more difficult. More Daedra will spawn initially and they spawn faster throughout the Dark Anchor. So they have really um, raised up the difficulty of these these dark anchors. I see somebody saying lower the volume, so we lowered that down a little bit. I apologize. You're going to have more lootable barrels, chests, and crates. So that's going to be more plentiful for you to be able to get items out of those. There have been thousands. That is in the notes. Thousands of quest fixes. I know a lot of people have complained, you know, in the past betas 
about bosses being bugged and not being able to do this, this won't spawn, thousands of quest fixes, guys. So 0.18, tons of fixes. You're probably going to see this stuff in the next beta session that we get, more than likely. I don't know what their plans are, but it's coming. What you're seeing right now is they have redone your starting zones. If you noticed, I went up through the portal, landed right in Davin's Watch. That's the first main city that you come to in the Ebonheart pack. So you are now thrown right into the main world. When you zone in, you're going to be told by the prophet, hey, there's guys you can go see to get go back to Bleak Rock. That's what I'm doing right now. So you can go back. Uh, to that starting zone it is still there those people still need help and it, it's a good change I really like this change it makes Bleak Rock feel like it's part of the world now instead of it being like a little starter zone that you just can't wait to get off of now it's like when you get thrown into the world it's like hey there's a there's a group of people that need help on this island my one feedback that I really would like to see with this is instead of me having to go hunt the guy down like you've seen, if that guy would be in my face saying, hey, can you please go help these people? They need help. I think that would be a good change. Next, Imperial Edition perks. The Imperial White Horse. That's what you're seeing right now. When you pre-order the Imperial Edition, you're going to get this White Horse. Um, right now, currently, it is available from the stables for one gold uh, in the PTS. Whether that's going to stay like that or not, I don't know. Very likely it will, but right now that's the way it is in the PTS. You have the Rings of Mara. If you look, I'll stop the video, you have this little item right here. Pledge of Mara. You can take this item to a shrine of Mara with one person. You target this person and you're going to be able to interact with them with a ceremony. The two people will interact with one another. Both parties must accept this ceremony. And when they do, you will receive a ring with that character's name on it. You put the ring on, it takes up a ring slot. When you are grouped with that person playing with that character, you're both going to be getting bonus experience. So it's going to help you level up a little bit faster. To my knowledge, the ring does not have a specific number on it for the experience. I've seen some people make some comments of, you know, two to three times leveling faster. Uh, it's a pretty good XP boost. Uh, something else to note about it is you can only have one ring on at a time. I know the question came up before, can I have multiple rings on? or? You know, can I take my ring, give it to this player, and then this player give it to someone else, and then this player give one back to me, and we both, all of us, all three of us get, like, way big experience? No. You can only have one ring on at a time. So make sure that you're wearing the proper ring with whoever you're grouping with. Lastly, about the Rings of Mara, is it cannot be undone. It's permanent. So choose wisely who you group with with this ring. The next little item is the uh, scuttler pet. It's a little small uh, dinosaur. You can see him there between my legs, hiding in the grass. He's a pretty cool little guy. Um, that's one of the, the features that comes out of the Explorer Pact, and that is default with all pre-orders. You're going to get that little scuttler pet right there. Next is going to be the mud crab vanity pet, and this mud crab is exclusive to the Imperial Edition. So whether you do the Digital Imperial Edition or if you do the um, Retail Edition, you're going to get this crab. And the last thing is going to be these treasure maps and the treasure map pack. And I know a lot of people have been making a fuss about these things. Well, here they are, and this is what they entail. First off, what is a treasure map? A treasure map is exactly what it sounds like. It's a picture of a place somewhere in the world it is named you can see some of these here like um, you got Deshaun uh, treasure maps it, it's named for the map where the zone is of that picture so you know where to go to in the zone you just gotta match up the picture with that particular spot and find the X in that picture and there'll be uh, 
a location to dig up the chest. You'll see that here in just a second. But the map pack itself, it's going to be mailed to you. If you notice right here, you've got the Dominion Treasure Pack. You've got a Covenant. You've got Cold Harbor. There's an Ebonheart Pact. When you crack these things open, you're going to get, I think it was like five, five or six maps. And as you see, there's like Deshaun, uh, Bleak Rock, etc. I mean, it, it breaks down, down into all of these zones. So there is a map for each of the zones per the alliances. And as you can see, we open that up. There's the detailed picture. A lot of you probably know exactly where that picture is. That's a very easy map, and it should be. That's your level one map, basically, of uh, Bleak Rock. The um, the loot that you will find in in these things, it is level appropriate to that zone. I know that this was a huge concern with uh, with some of the other uh, video casters out there that it would be an unfair boost. It's going to be just epic loot that is going to blow everything out of the water, and I don't think so. Uh, I had a big concern of, you know, would I be able to hold on to these treasure maps until I get like the veteran rank 10 and then go hunt them all down and then open it up and get veteran rank 10 stuff, and that is most definitely not the case. And as you can see here, I'm actually going through, looking at the treasure map, you can see the, the dock that goes up, and then the little dotted lines goes over to the X by the little uh, ruin over there, I guess is what you'd call it. So as you can see, I'm going to take off running, get stuck in the crates, and we're going to go over here and find the uh, the chest. You'll see right now-ish, right there it is, there's a dirt mound over on that hillside. That is what your mounds will look like for hidden treasures. You dig the mound up, and then there's going to be a treasure chest that appears. When you loot that treasure chest, chances are you're going to get a little bit of gold. There's some blue items there, and as you can see, level 2. Uh, 56 armor, I mean, that's not, you know, massive. It's a blue item. Uh, it's good gear, but is it godly gear? Eh, I, I don't know. You'd outgrow it pretty quick. I'm interested to see like, what some of the higher level ones bring. But, uh, you know, that that's pretty much the, the treasure maps and the Imperial Edition stuff wrapped up. I have some more information I'm going to cover right now that I know a lot of you have been um, asking about. Veteran ranks. Veteran points. What are they? How do they work? It's high level stuff. We don't know nothing about it. Well, you're going to get it now. Veteran ranks, the way that they work, you will level up to level 49. The second you click over to 50, you're going to become a veteran rank 1. Veteran points are gained by completing 50 plus and 50 plus plus content. Something to note about this, because immediately everybody's going to think, every time I level up, I'm going to just get stronger, stronger, stronger. Not so much. Veteran points do not increase attributes and skill points. Instead, it's allowing you to equip better gear. As you start raising in veteran ranks, you're going to see gear, even crafted gear, that requires you to be veteran rank 6, veteran rank 8, etc. That's where, instead of this leveling vertically, going higher and higher and higher, more damage, more damage, more damage, you start expanding out. It's like, I want to get this special look of this gear or these stats of this gear, whatever, you're expanding horizontally. And that's really what this veteran rank system does, is it's not just a one right after the other leveling system. Instead, you know, you're going to be able to have people play together as these veteran ranks. It's just these veteran ranks are enabling you to get better gear and wear higher level gear. One last thing to note about the veteran ranks, veteran zones, things like that, that I think a lot of misconception has went about it 
and I even thought so myself until we got there in the PTS. Whenever you go and hit that veteran rank one and you want to start exploring the 50 plus content, do I get to choose the alliance I want to do next? Like I started in Evanhart Pact, okay. I get to choose DC or AD. No, you do not get to choose. Ebonheart Pact, whenever you hit Veteran Rank 1, the next place you're going to go is Daggerfall Covenant. You go through Daggerfall Covenant as a level 50 plus, you do all of that. Then, after you complete the level 50 plus in Daggerfall Covenant, you go to Aldmeri Dominion. I can't remember exactly how the Daggerfall starts out. I want to say Daggerfall goes to Aldmeri and then to to Evanhart, I believe that's right. And then Aldmeri Dominion goes to Evanhart and then DC. I believe that's right. Correct me if I'm wrong for the people that's been there, but trust me, that is the way that it works. EP goes to DC, then to AD. So that's going to bring it to a wrap of episode number 11. A lot of information for you guys again. And like I said, get ready to be seeing a lot of streaming, PTS streaming, including high-level content. Uh, I do want to say, you know, Zoss would like for you to be saying that you're going to have spoiler content. If you're going to be streaming PTS and it's high-level content that has spoilers in it, story spoilers, let the people watching your channel know. Because some people may not want that stuff spoiled. Just let them know, say, hey you're going to see some stuff, or if you know for a fact something's about to happen that's a spoiler, let them know. So anybody else that's out there right now uh, in Twitch channel, if you've got questions about episode number 11 or anything that I've covered, just let me know now. Go ahead and ask it, anything that I've just went over. We are free to talk about anything in the PTS. With the exception of Adventure Zones. I can't say anything about Adventure Zones. That's the one thing we can't say nothing about. And quite frankly, I've not even seen them. Nor has really anybody in, uh, in the PTS. Let's see. Dominoid is asking, ton of balance changes in point .18. Anything really stick out to you? Um... The collision is a huge thing. I really, really like it. And, you know, going back over this again, I think that the collision in the game is helping the the combat big time. As you've seen right there, whenever I, I actually come down and hit that skeleton, it, it pulled through it. And you can actually feel the difference now. It, it's a lot more fluid uh, as far as, as combat is concerned. So that's probably a big deal that, that jumped out to me. But um, the Dark Fishers, love the Dark Fishers. I, I had a blast with that. Whenever it happened to me, I was just literally running along, and then all of a sudden, I look up in the sky, and I'm like, what is that? And all of a sudden, just stuff starts pouring out of it. I'm like, oh, my God. So I'm fighting, you know, stuff, and here's all this other stuff pouring down on top of me at random and I had to you know kill all that stuff off and then it closes the portal so again that's really cool I'm very interested to see if that happens in PvP that could really mix things up quite a bit to have you know random uh, dark fishers spawn in on you know a group of people fighting one another just to see how they how they'd respond to that random fisher coming out let's see Voodoo asks, do the levels become harder to gain as you get higher, specifically veteran ranks? Yes. Um, I was actually reading something from Wicked uh, in the forums. He was specifically talking about leveling in veteran ranks. He said from veteran rank 1 to 2 wasn't that bad, but from 2 to 3 it slowed down quite a bit, and he was, I think, currently working on veteran rank 3 or something. I just recently hit veteran ranks. I've not had a lot of experience with them yet. Uh, I went into Daggerfall a little bit 
tinkered around in there and looked at a few things, but um, from what I'm reading, it, it's much more difficult. Party Prash is asking, what GPUs do you guys have at the moment? I am currently working on a 660. Um, it's by Asus 660. I actually ordered a gigabyte uh, 760 that I've got to put in my system here in just a little bit. I'm hoping to have that up and running um, for the weekend to make streaming a lot better. Let's see, Tendavals. Looks like Tendaval is asking or answering someone's question a little bit further up. I don't see where that's at, so if I've missed it, go ahead and run that by me again. Dominoids asking, Dark Fisher's random appearance as far as location. From what I can tell, yes, it is random. Uh, it, you can be anywhere. I had one spawn in between a pair of rocks on me. Uh, John Foes, do you know of any stack limits on gathered ingredients? I want to say it's 100 on just about every one of them. Stack limit is 100. Uh, Riflar is asking, what's a fun class? Because being a, a bowman can be kind of boring. Uh, well, as far as the, the class itself, something I would strongly recommend is, you know, instead of trying to think that Dragon Knight means I'm melee, or Knight Blade means I'm a stealth bow character, or stealthy dagger character, or the, the sorcerer means that I am a mage, that goes out the window, seriously. Don't, don't even try to attack it like that. You need to come at it with the mindset of how do I want to play? Do I want to play a bowman? Okay. Check out the bow skill line. There's a lot of uh, skill trees out there, esohead.com. They've got skill trees uh, that you can go in and read everything. When you get into the game, you know, build a, all four level ones. Just go in and look at the skill trees. See what they offer. Look at the racial skills. Start seeing how these other builds could contribute to how you want to play. You've got to ask yourself, do I want to be a melee? Do I want to be a um, a melee with healing? A melee with you know fireballs? What type of armor do I want to wear? All that stuff. Look at your armor skill lines and put all this stuff together and figure out just how the, these mixtures can help you and then look at your class skill lines and say this class has this this would really help me with these other skills I know it's backwards but that's something that's really cool about the class system in this game John Fos asking what's a GPU just kidding <laughs> Toek is asking, how short is your delay time? I think the stream is about a uh, 30 second to 45 second delay. Rodney is asking, Def, what about PvP specific gear? There is PvP gear, but let me go ahead and debunk something really, really fast here. There is not PvP specific, if you will. You are more than welcome to get gear out of a dungeon, take that gear and go do PvP. It is completely valid. You need to really pay attention to the stats and what the gear is doing for you uh, to help your playstyle. Again, you, it goes back to how do I want to play the game. You, you have to make sure that your playstyle, you're utilizing all of your abilities and making sure that your armor and the skills on this armor jobs with how you're wanting to play. I mean, you don't want a bunch of stats that help you uh, stay away from people if your purpose is to get up in their face. Whales asking, I am going to be an orc. What is the best build for the berserk tank that the orc is? Uh, I've actually not looked a ton into the orc lines. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Let's pull up the orc here real quick. Orc. 
Let's see what he has to offer. ESO Head is saying uh, increases max health and max stamina by 2%. That's not a bad uh, bonus to have. Increases experience gain with the heavy armor skill line, so your heavy armor is going to level up faster, which there is some some very good survival stuff in the heavy armor line itself. And robust increases health regeneration in combat. So yeah, I mean, as far as racials are concerned, um, I would probably be looking at the sword and shield line. If I was looking to be an orc, uh, a tank, and you're definitely going to find that these passives are really going to help quite a bit with the heavy armor skill line. You may even want to get into the full-blown uh, heavy armor skill line. Let's see. Oh, Daddy's asking, can Imperials sell their horses in auction houses or are they bound? You cannot sell the horses. They are kept in your stables. Dominoid is asking, is there a story arc to explain why you can visit the other alliances in 50 plus? Yes. I ain't going there. <laughs> oh my god to the story. That's all I gotta say. But trust me, I'm not gonna spoil. I will not spoil that story. It It is something that you yourself need to experience. Bottom line. If anybody's interested as well, I'll be happy to read the feedback that I left Zoss whenever I went through the main storyline and completed it. I'll read you guys what I what I wrote to them as feedback. There's no spoilers in it. It's just my first initial thoughts of of the game. And you know, it it doesn't get no more pure than that. Whenever you just first beat it, it's like this is what I thought. Let me see if I can find it. I know I've got it somewhere. Okay, here it is. This is exactly, this is exactly what I sent Zoss, word for word, in a feedback. I said, quote, I just finish, finished the main storyline to the game. Holy shit. Sorry, now that's out of the way, Zoss. You have done a far superior job than I anticipated with the story to this game. Jaw-dropping edge of my seat to say the least. I thoroughly enjoyed the story from the opening events in my cell in Cold Harbor all the way up to where I am now. You've really left the story with so much more to expand with in this game and I must say everyone involved with the production of this game has gone above and beyond to produce it. Keep up the great work and I can't wait for the final product to release. Word for word, my first initial experiences with completing the story. I don't know if any of you liked that or not, but that's seriously the way that I felt. Let's see. Back up to some of these questions. Well was asking, how does the illusion skill work in ESO? I am also very curious how it will be used in PvP. I've not really done tremendous testing with illusion um, especially with PvP I did do some testing with stealth and it's very interesting the way that stealth works in PvP um, I had someone stand still on an opposing alliance and I pretty much went all the way around them alright stealth it was about 20 to 30 feet out in front of them and you know 
you can't get really too close to them straight out in front of them but it's honestly just like your peripheral vision to yourself out this way if you are anywhere in that zone they're going to see you but anywhere from the back side backwards you can literally get right up behind the person and you won't see them at all but if they turn around you simply just appear and you see the person otherwise you don't see nothing Oh, Daddy's asking, around what level do you get to become a vampire or werewolf? Uh, let's see. Towards the end of your, um, your zone, from what I've gathered. I've not found the way to do it, but I've seen a lot of stuff talking about it in the chatter of how it's done. But, uh... Again, I don't know exactly how it's done. I've just heard that it's towards the end of your alliance zone. Jenfos is back to the attribute uh, point. Back to the attribute point spread question. If your guild wasn't planned, would it be okay to put one attribute in health, stamina, and magicka and rotate it like that? I've actually been um, doing a build that I've seen somebody ask about after I started it and it's just a, a balanced build across the across the board to where everything's equal and it works it really does work the things that I've seen is to me it feels like that I could have better utilized my points if I had chosen more so one side or the other with the fence uh, instead of trying to be right down the middle. But to say that it doesn't work, that would be wrong. It definitely can work. Rylar is asking, what PC do you recommend going to get a new PC when the game comes out? Surprisingly, you do not need a tip-top master computer that costs, you know, two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000. I mean, you could put, you know, 800 bucks into a computer and have something to run the game. I mean... Zoss has really done an amazing job with uh, the utilization of the CPU and the GPU. The game runs spectacular. I I've never seen a game run on my computer as well as what uh, Elder Scrolls Online runs. I, I sit normally around 20% CPU usage. I did some stressing with uh, recording and some streaming. Uh, I did not actually stream the game itself. The splash screen of my... Uh, ESO recapped was there, but I was actually streaming the game behind that. You couldn't see anything, couldn't hear nothing, but I was stressing just to see how my system would re react to it, and surprisingly, it does very well. It only went up to, you know, about 60% CPU usage. I was using uh, an AMD 8-core processor and the 660 GPU. It does really good. John is asking, and wouldn't the final release be more optimized and run better on our systems? Yes. Um, as they said, you know, this build that we're getting in beta is more server side stability test. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're we're going to continue to see them tweaking these these settings to try to deliver the best possible experience. Something to note about the collision. That puts a little bit more stress uh, on your system to have that collision in there. I know that they, there's been people ask, well, if you're going to put collision in, why isn't it in PvP? The big reason that they don't do it is, again, back to how much pressure it puts on a system to have that collision. Because your computer has got to detect that collision, and it's got to handle it. And that puts so much more of a load. So if you have 200 versus 200, or however many, on the screen at one time, that's a massive amount of load, not to mention griefing. I mean, that, that would just be a given. 
Dominoids asking Cyrodiil City slash Town Radiant Quest. Will they help fill time between PVE additions or are they lacking in depth and otherwise boring? I actually did go do some Cyrodiil Quest um, a couple weeks ago in testing and I was at Chaden Hall, uh, picked up, you know, went in. There's a couple quests there. They had me, you know, going out, killing a couple things. I would come back, turn the quest in immediately. Boom. Here's another quest. Go do this. You know, and they had me running around to little different areas around Chaden Hall. And the experience wasn't terrible. Um, as far as being able to farm those quests, I don't think that it's going to be ideal to farm those guys specifically for quests for two reasons. One, it did feel like it was a little bit lower experience for that quest in PvP as opposed to if I was PvEing and doing stuff. And two, I had it happen to me two times. I was doing a quest, all of a sudden this guy jumps on my back and tries to kill me, managed to kill the monster off, turned around and killed the guy. All right, I go back to doing my quest, and then I'm starting on killing this lieutenant. Well, this lieutenant's a lot more powerful, and I get him down to about 60% health, and I got another guy that jumps my back. So I'm in the middle of fighting this lieutenant and this other guy at the same time, and, you know, it, it was pretty difficult. I managed to kill the guy, but, uh, you know, it's definitely more difficult to try to be questing and you're getting jumped from these other uh, enemy players and that's just something you're going to have to expect when it comes to Cyrodiil. Toek is asking um, what is my opinion on the Trinity versus hybrid groups? At low levels, I know that I mentioned this last week on episode number 10, that Low levels, the Trinity is not so much there. I mean, we went through a low-level dungeon with uh, pretty much four DPS and a healer. We was all casters, a uh, mixture of light and medium armor. Nobody was really set up as a tank, and we made it through there. It was not easy. Um, I think it's definitely ideal to bring a, a proper setup to these dungeon runs, and I'm going to say that you're going to need them when it comes to veteran rank dungeons. I, I've been listening to a few of the guys um, that's talking um, in, in our team speak and the, you know they're talking about doing these veteran dungeons and just listening to them talk about how difficult they are. You know, I've not done one yet. I can't wait to get in there and do one. I'm sure we'll be stream, streaming veteran dungeons uh, over the weekend. So uh, you know, come and watch how difficult they are. You know, I mean it we're, we're just going to show exactly what it is. It's not any cut and dry of, oh, we've got to play great because we're streaming. No, we're just going to stream, and whatever happens, happens. Let's see. Yeah, I've seen that, uh, Tend of All, that it was missing the the final perk. I know ESO Head is, uh, is, is missing some stuff on there, but, you know, that's one of the things that's out there to kind of use it. Uh, Rylar is saying the game does freeze a little bit and things do load a bit slow. Actually, the game freezing, uh, I did see that Zoss was addressing something with that. And I know we've had a couple of guys that's been complaining about random freezes. So that's, that's something they are looking at. Well, if you purchase the PC Mac digital download, can you download it on Mac and then PC without purchasing it twice? Because I am going to play on the Mac when it comes out, then eventually on PC. I answered this question way too quick on the Facebook page the other day, and I had to go back and eat crow. The answer is yes. The PC and the Mac client are one entity. So if you buy one, you get the other. So you can download both. However, with consoles, as it stands right now, they're separate. Consoles and PCs, or PC slash Mac, are separate. Dominoids asking, can we 
at least get a thumbs up or thumbs down on Adventure Zones, pretty please. As I said, I've not played them myself. I have seen the map of one. <laughs> we'll stay there. And what I have seen on it, as far as what has been mentioned in the PTS, yes, I think we're fine. We'll have to, I'll have to see it in person to be able to, you know, give a hardcore definite answer to it, but I think we're going to be all right. See, Dominoid is asking, have you tried this from the patch notes? Adding an option to turn off quest giver indicators, which is located under the interface portion of the settings menu. Will this turn off the indicators both in world and on compass? I know I messed with that setting, and I want to say that it does turn it off on everything. You don't see nothing. So I know that that comes from an issue that somebody brought up with the fact that you pick up a quest and it's like, well, I need you to go find such and such. And you hit the map button and it's like, right there he is on the map. I see him because this indicator says so. And I'm pretty sure that it removes everything. So if you want that type of play style, turn it all off. Go talk to the people. Listen to what they say. Go look for him. Rylar is asking, what time will the game launch on April 1st? Uh, actually, it's the 30th of March is when early access will begin for the earliest people. They have not set a specific time as to when the, the early access will start. John is asking, what are the objectives on this beta test? Is it just the massive loading of the server? Pretty much, yes. Like I said at the start of the episode, it's pretty much the exact same build that you had last beta session with some back-end server stability up updates. So that's really all that's been done. Does that mean that the, that's all they've done? Absolutely not. Like I said, with the .18 build that is in PTS, there are thousands of updates, and it, it's a huge patch. I mean, we're, we're still digging through stuff and finding changes. Even, you know, earlier today, I heard the guys, you know, talking about, oh, I didn't know that this existed, or they changed this. Yep. You know, it, we're, we're fine. Some of us see stuff, others don't see it. You know, we're all finding little bitty nitpicks of things that we didn't know changed. Let's see. Yeah, we can start the, the video back up. I'm loving that you guys are, you know, interacting, you know, with, with everything tonight and asking questions. That That's what, that's what this, this episode stuff is really, really about. I mean, I can't stress that enough, honestly, is I want you guys to ask. Ask me what you don't know. If I don't know the answer, when I'm able to stream, we'll go find the answer and find out what it is, or we'll ask somebody, you know, for that fact. And I know you see, like, Tim Duvall in here. Uh, there's a lot of people that are in the PTS with me that are testing with me, alongside with me, that you know these guys are amazing I, I can't give them enough credit as to how much work they do and you know there, there's a lot of names I could just list off but you know that's what we're going to be doing is making sure everybody gets the information that they need answering these questions and if you're confused about something say something you know the community is great with answering questions with this game Biggie P1 is asking, I've seen some PvP and was just asking if melee classes are at a disadvantage against all them casters. No. Honestly, I've been running a a melee character 
uh, a dragon knight that's that's what i've been playing i love the pvp on my melee i mean it, it's fun i've got the the fiery reach with extend it's morphed to extended i will see this all the time i'll run up to a keep on the edge and be looking up on this keep wall and just see all these mages and bowmen up there and they're on the edges just shooting down at us trying to hurt us i'll run up to them off to their side where they can't see me i'll fire a grit and pull them down and you just see like herds of people that was with me just come over and everybody's just jumping on this guy and just murdering him so absolutely not you know melee can definitely survive in in uh, pvp John is asking, will this be the last beta before release? It's getting close to a deadline for shipping, isn't it? I don't think so. I think we're definitely going to see more beta sessions, uh, even before release. I, I think that Zoss is using every bit of amount of time that they have right up to the, the release to make sure all these little bugs are stomped out and that this game is top-notch. Uh, Zoss is taking this stuff very seriously and that's why I started off with the episode saying that your feedback is important. It seriously is very important. Like I said, both the negative and the positive feedback, Zoss wants to hear it. If you have ideas, if it if it's negative feedback, don't just bash it, you know. It's fine to bash, but tell them why you're bashing it. Tell them how you would fix it. Don't just say, oh, I hate this. Okay, I am understand you hate it. Let's get past that. Why do you hate it? How would you fix it? Tell them how. If you see something that's just, oh, my God, this was great, feedback it, submit it. You know, say, this was so amazing. Tell them why you thought it was amazing. You don't have to write a book short and sweet. Just get to the point and say, this is why it was sweet. Boom, send it. Alright, I think I've got all the questions answered. I very, very much appreciate everybody that stopped in, you know, engaged. We got almost an hour on this episode. I mean, about 30 minutes or so, 25 minutes for the main points. Got through it on regular time tons of questions and answers you know for this video I've been going back and time stamping all the important information so if you're watching any of my previous videos as well as this one and all the future ones if there's a time stamp that I miss that you feel that is important in the descriptions let me know what the the time is just comment on that video and say hey at such and such time I feel that it'd be good to have this time stamp in I'll edit it put that timestamp in so that it's easy for you guys to navigate to the answers you want. Uh, Twitch Mage, this is not live. I'm live, but what you're watching in the background behind me is recorded. Uh, Whale is asking, which race is most played? <laughs> How do you answer this? At the start, like early, early beta, there was like so much data gathered that people were so gun ho of this is what I'm going to play, this is what I want to do. You would be so surprised as to how many times I've seen people, even my people, that I communicate with, that they've changed their minds. You know? I have changed my mind myself. I started out, I was like, I'm going to be a Nord, I'm going to be a Dragon Knight, and I'm going to wear heavy armor and just be a big, bulky tank, sword, and board. Now, I'm in a, a toss up of an Imperial Dragon Knight or uh, Templar. The Templar is really awesome. Um, but he's got issues that he can't do exactly what I can do in my Dragon Knight. Man, my Dragon Knight has some things that is really great that I can't do with the Templar. 
So I'm in the process of leveling up a Templar to really narrow down how I really, really want to play the game. And I think that that's something that a lot of people are doing, is as they play this game, and they really start seeing how this game expands and unfolds and to the decisions that you have, it's just like, holy crap. Maybe I need to step back and reconsider what I've chosen and really check out these other races. So, what's being the most played? I, I don't know. I mean, it, a lot of stuff is. A lot of stuff is being played and just switched around. Let these wandering souls return home. Let the will of Molog Baal be denied. Uh, Anderfeen is asking, Harris, will there be vanity gear? I know we have crafting, etc. But is everything armor-like, or are there more casual looks? There are um, costumes that you'll be getting in the game um, that just simply overlays the gear so there's that aspect of the vanity gear uh, something else that's uh, that you can do in the PTS is you can actually convert any piece of gear that you got on well I won't say any because I am running into some stuff I don't know if it's intended that certain items can only be transferred to Imperial or not I, I'm feedbacking it but anyways like I was saying you can transfer for the appearance of a piece of gear into an imperial style is that something we're going to see happen i don't know but the thing is is when you transform a piece of gear into that imperial style it's bound you cannot trade it so you know we may see that happen um in the future with other different styles i, I don't know i don't know if that's going to happen or not but i know that that is in right now with the imperial gear gear itself Twitch Mage is asking which class does the most burst damage. Uh, if I had to guess what I feel does the most burst damage, I would probably have to say a sorcerer. Uh, they've got some really powerful spells if you use it right. And what I mean by that is in one of my previous videos, uh, the dungeons, let me roll back here to the dungeon video while well, I've got it pulled up. There we go. Alright, so I've got this ability here, Crystal Fragments. This ability hits really hard. Alright, 83 damage, um, knocks your target down for two seconds, 35% chance to make your next use of an instant cast and cost 50% less when activating an ability that costs magicka. Alright, so you got that. I think it's on back. Yeah, Mage's Wrath. And this is what I'm talking about with the the combos of setting up these abilities. Mage's Wrath, it's lower damage, 24 shock, explodes for an additional 72 shock damage if the target falls below 20% health within 4 seconds. The explosion deals 29 shock damage to enemies within a 4 meter radius. So what you'll see me do is I will hit Mage's Wrath on a, an enemy, instant cast, boom, 24 damage, no big deal. If my hands turn blue, that is the indicator that Crystal Fragments is now instant cast. I can use crystal fragments and it's boom instant cast right out of the gate and this guy right here gets jacked by it. You see I start off with the cast right there's Mage's Wrath boom instant cast dead. The reason that happens is because Mage's Wrath he's hit with that 24 damage and then you have that four second time frame. I hit him with uh, Crystal Fragments, knocks his health down below 20%, and then Mage's Wrath explodes. So those two coupled, you've got a really high speak, uh, a peak of damage. But that's only because those two abilities are combined. As far as them by themselves, they're really not that much more powerful than anything else. So it, it's really finding what really works. see. 
I'll go ahead and let this keep playing. You guys want to see some gameplay. This, this is from episode number 10, by the way, uh, if you guys want to see that uh, entire video. Let's see. I'm trying to put a guild together. Can we recruit in-game during beta? And that's from Chaos Beef. Chaos Beef asks, trying to put a guild together, can you recruit in-game during beta? Yes. And to create a guild, you just hit the G button on your keyboard. Hit E to create a guild if you're not in one. Type in the uh, the guild, and I think you can even still hit E and create a guild from that point anyway if you're not a guild leader. Create your guild, set an alliance to whatever you want to be aligned to, and then, you know, just go into the roster, start inviting players. They do not carry over, though. I will tell you that. It's confirmed. Characters and all that is going to be wiped before live. So your guild is not going to carry over. Uh, Dreg Eggman is saying, do you know what the base health regen is and how it is scaled through increases? Uh, the base of it, I don't know the exact number of base, but as you put points of uh, attribute points into health itself, that does affect the health regen, and it will go up. As far as leveling up, it does increase as you level because you're going to get more health and things, so that does increase as far as the specific amounts. I don't know that. And all those numbers like that, I mean, you're going to see that stuff change. How does the Imperial armor look? Well, hold on. I'll just have to revert back. Right there is your Imperial Dragon Knight novice gear. That's the low level stuff. That's the veteran Imperial armor. This is the sorcerer novice the veteran sorcerer that is your nightblade novice and veteran and that is your templar novice and veteran so that's your imperial gear This is uh, one of the Dungeons Fungal Grotto from episode number 10. See, we got Whale asking, so how does the economy work in the game? I want to get into crafting. By the way, thanks for all the answers. No problem on the answers. Like I said, it's what this stream is primarily for. As far as the economy, guilds will have um, members, of course. Whenever you have 10 people in that guild, you're going to unlock the guild bank. That's where you're going to be able to actually store items in the guild bank. Currently, those uh, the max number of slots in the guild bank is 500. That's in the PTS. Um, at 50 people, you unlock what's called a guild store. The guild store works just like an auction house. You can list items up on it, buy and sell. It is for your guild only. And that's it. Now here's the catch. If your guild gets into Cyrodiil and you take over a keep and you manage to claim that keep by talking to the NPC that's at the back of the keep by the door, typically if you're running to the back of the keep, you hang a left, they're right there. You 
talk to that guy and you say, hey, I want to claim this keep for my guild. Or resource. Resources count as well. But the biggies are the keeps because that's where everybody goes. But that allows non-guild mates to access your guild's store. So at that point, you're going to be buy, uh, buying selling to non-guild members. So, you know, if you go to a keep that a guild has claimed, you can buy from a guild that you're not even in. Just like if you're in a guild that has claimed, you can sell to people that's not even in your guild. Twitch Mage is asking, uh, guild claim ownership of a castle or a keep? Uh, I think I answered that just to reiterate it, that it applies to keeps and resources. Let's see, Whale is asking what happens when you die in game? This might be a simple question, but I haven't heard anything about it yet. It's a simple question, but it's not a stupid question. It's a fair question to say the least. When you die in the game, you're going to have uh, two options. You can either revive at the nearest way shrine, or you can uh, revive here. You can do the way shrine by pressing E. You can do here by pressing R. There's a catch to here. You can revive on that spot up to level 6 freely. So you can just keep popping back up. You get killed tons and tons of times. Up to level 6, it's free. After level 6, you're going to have to have what's called a a filled soul gem. You're familiar with soul gems from previous Elder Scrolls games. If you've played them, if you're not familiar, it's just a purple gem, and they're broken down in levels. Level 1 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to whatever, and it just goes up. So if you're a level 10 and you only have filled soul gems of 1 to 9, you cannot use that soul gem. But if you are uh, if you have a soul gem that is 10 to 19 and you're still level 10, you can use a filled soul gem to revive yourself. Soul gems are also used in recharging your weapon. So if your weapon has, say, a fire damage to it and that charge goes down, you'll see a bar on your weapon go down. And after it's depleted, you can right-click the weapon, tell it to charge, use a filled soul gem of that appropriate level. So if the weapon is a level 10 weapon, you can use that level 10 shard that's filled to recharge that gem. So hopefully that gets uh, gets all of that cleared up for you and gives you a little bit of extra information as well. Let's see, where was I at? Dominoid asks, what is the latest on any kind of cash shop? Is it services only? Vanity items? Information has been vague and sometimes conflicting. This goes back to fall of last year whenever Matt Ferrore was directly asked, what can I get in the cash shop? You know, the, the term of fun stuff was thrown around. We've not heard anything about it, really, since then. And it pretty much stood as it is for account services. That type of stuff. As far as being able to buy gear that's going to make you better or buy levels or things like that, no. I think what you're going to see is going to be uh, like character name changes, maybe appearance changes. That's just a wild guess. It's not confirmed or anything. That's just a, a wild hair guess. Um, honestly, I hope that they put something like cosmetic barbers or whatever that you can just change that stuff on the fly because I know people like to change their hair all the time and that would be cool. But uh, name changes, maybe. Uh, I don't know how much with a racial change. I don't know. We'll just have to see. I mean, there, there's really no information out there on what these stores are going to have, but I, I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to be able to impact you being stronger in the game, basically. It's all account stuff. And sorry I was vague on it, but 
I don't have any information on it. Let's see. Rylar, is this the last beta before launch? Uh, that one's been answered, but just to reiterate, we don't know. Um, I doubt it. I'm pretty sure we'll probably have more, but again, it's not been confirmed. Dominoid's asking, do you think guilds will let keeps fall so they can retake the keep and reclaim it for their guild, basically stealing it from the original guild? Are there any systems to play in place to prevent or discourage this? Uh, kind of got lost in that question. Let me reread it again. Do you think guilds will let keeps fall so they can retake the keep and claim it for their guild. Uh, I, I find a hard way to believe that the way that I'm reading this is if I'm getting guild one alright and guild one owns this keep and I'm also in guild two and I want Guild 2 to really have this keep. I'm going to find it very hard to believe that everybody in that keep is going to, you know, just say, hey, let this keep fall so that such and such guild can get it. That might happen in, you know, guilds that form as markets. That may happen. But to say the least, you know, it's not easily done to take over keeps. It takes quite a bit of work. And the three alliance war thing, that just adds more chaos to the mix anyways. Uh, chaos Beef asks, will any of the anchors actually threaten and invade the nearby villages or are they just XP farming zones? I have not seen any uh, dark anchor land in a town yet. They've all been outside of towns. Might not be a bad idea to feedback it. You know, who's to say that these dark fishers don't do it? I doubt they do, but it, it'd still be kind of cool to see the chaos every once in a while. Let's see. What benefits do you get from claiming it? I'm assuming that Thomas Booth is talking about claiming a keep. Uh, for claiming a keep, it's going to give quite a few different bonuses, uh, like XP I think is out there, gold is out there, um, gosh I can't remember all of them. Uh, there, there is like a slew of them and as you capture more and more and more of these keeps, your like buff bar in your character sheet gets massive. And it's just passive abilities is what it boils down to that you're receiving, but they're great passive abilities. So you really want to to fight and hold control of those keeps. Let's see. Polio, they gave the okay to stream gameplay now. What you're watching right now is recorded gameplay. This was uh, captured from the PTS recently and uh, it is not live. I'm live, the video behind me is not. Twitch Mage is asking, which alliance are you gonna play on? That one is still up in the air. Um, I've tested on all three alliances, and you know, they're all three beautiful. I enjoy them. Um, as far as what's holding me back from making a, a decision is more so about the gaming community that Seeing Blue and I founded and we're going to have multiple guilds in our community, Great Architect, um, come launch. So, you know, we're all in discussion with one another. You know, we got guild leaders. I'm the guild leader of Great Architect. Of course, we've got, like I said, other guilds, and we've got those leaders, and I'm working with those other guild leaders to discuss the pros and cons of how uh, putting guilds... I'm about to die right here, by the way, so you get to see what happens and how you revive. We're discussing the pros and cons of how choosing a certain alliance for the guild will work versus if we chose the same alliance. So we're weighing those options. 
Let's see, where did we go? Where do we go? Pure Silk, Doctor. If I cast Regeneration on the ground while holding the Restoration Staff and then switch to a, my Destruction Staff straight after, will that cancel the Regeneration I cast on the ground? No. Let me break this one down because it's a very good question and some people I think are definitely still confused on it. Basically, what it boils down to is this. You have time-based abilities and then you have what are being called the toggle permanent abilities. The difference is I press button, this happens for X amount of seconds. All right, Those abilities will carry over whenever you uh, switch the short-term abilities. Um, now if it's an ability like summoning a pet, you, you click it, boom, that pet comes out, toggle permanent. Those abilities, you've got to have the corresponding ability on your secondary bar as well in order for that pet to remain out. Um, so that's, that's the big difference there in that. So hopefully that answers that question. Polio is saying the pre-order price is murder, 80 euros and 12 and a half euros per month. Um, for euros, that may be correct. I'll have to give it to you in US. It is um, 59.99 USD for the standard game, 79.99 USD for the Imperial Edition digital and $99.99 for the retail Imperial Edition and it is $14.99 a month after that. Zoss has mentioned some stuff about discounts for purchasing additional months up front. We'll see how, how that goes. Dista Live asks, hey do you know how many times I can morph a spell? One. Morphing currently is only one time. You can reset your abilities and your skills, so if you pick a morph and you don't like it, you can refund it, get all your skills back, go back through, and pick up the other morph, or no morph, if you don't want it. Whale is asking, is there any limits to what you can do in the beta compared to the full release? I got invited this weekend, and this is the first beta I am participating in for ESO, so I am a bit curious. For the beta you will be accessing up to level 17 content. Um, that's where your cap stops you at. You're gonna see people streaming, um, including myself, I said this earlier, you're gonna see me streaming PTS content. This content goes above 17 and the PTS is really more of a concrete finished product if you will but it's still very much so in in testing but there's there's no limitations on it other than adventure zones I've not seen them yet I've not played them we can't talk about them that's the only thing we can't talk about beauty qd87 is asking are you forming your own guild yes I am uh, I will be guild master over the guild great architect that is going to be housed in the gaming community, Great Architect. So just to clarify that, I'm a founder of the gaming community, Great Architect. It's a multi-gaming community. Uh, it was founded by myself and my friend Seeing Blue. He's, I think he's still in the channel. Blue, you still there somewhere hiding? Uh, we both founded the gaming community uh, as a place for you know people to come and hang out, have people to communicate about the games they enjoy playing. So that's the community, and there's different divisions, and Elder Scrolls Online is one of the divisions in that community that I head up. So you can conceal your pets. Yes, you can tell your pets to go away. Alright, any other questions out there? Wow, we're up to 32 people watching right now. Holy cow. 
been a while since I've had 32 people in my stream. <laughs> I'm very, very glad that, you know, I'm happy that I have spent more time doing what I'm doing right now than I've spent preparing all the information for the recap video. I love doing the recaps, don't get me wrong, but I do them, you know, to to spark your interest, to get you to ask questions. And like I said, the stream over the weekend, starting tomorrow, um, I will be home somewhere around 6-ish, probably. We'll just have to see how things go. I'll start streaming tomorrow evening, do streaming all weekend, showing off the game, playing it. Please stop by the stream, ask questions, you know, that's what I'm here for. Ask away, come and watch the stream, hang out, you know, that, that's what it's for. It really is. Beauty's asking, will this guild be widely accepting members? Is the guild tied to an alliance? Thanks for letting us ask questions in anticipation. Yes, um, the community itself, you know, we are not trying to isolate people based on what alliance they choose. Um, regardless of the alliance that I put Great Architect in, uh, I want people to really feel that they can come to everybody, you know, in the community and ask questions and get answers regardless of what alliance they choose. And, you know, that's one of the options we're weighing with the the multiple guilds um, in the community having them in all the alliances so at least there is a guild in that alliance that you know you're gonna have somebody to play with uh, so again there's there's some pros and cons we're trying to weigh on all of this to see how it best affects everybody but regardless of how it turns out you're still welcome to be in the guild right? even if you're not part of the alliance that uh, the league that we like find it adventurers every one of us eager for riches and glory you sure dungeon delving and monster fun. good hello i appreciate you stopping by i'm guessing that you're already gone but i definitely appreciate you stopping by and asking questions seems like a good fest All right, I think that's going to wrap up episode number 11. Holy cow, that was a long episode, but worth it. Very good questions. I'll get the timestamps and everything done, uh, get the video uploaded to the YouTube channel. You can go and watch this replay on youtube.com forward slash defatank if you missed the main points that I covered earlier. Head to my YouTube channel as well. Check out you know some of the previous episodes. A lot of really good feedback and questions uh, from the episode number 9 crafting, episode number 10 dungeons. That's really good videos that a lot of people seem to really enjoy. You know, ask questions in those videos, leave comments, questions, suggestions on all of it. You know, let me know if there's something that's not clear, by all means. Beta starts Friday at noon. Uh, just to answer that question real quick. If you need more information about the Elder Scrolls Online, you can visit ElderScrollsOnline.com. If you want to check out the gaming community that uh, we run, it's GreatArchitect.us. Again, I will be streaming on the live stream that you're watching right now. It's going to be going this weekend. Twitch.tv forward slash Devatank. Encourage your friends to stop by here, ask questions. You know, we got a lot of really good people with a lot of really good knowledge that will be more than happy to answer questions and uh, you know I very much appreciate everybody stopping by participating chatting in the in the chat I mean it that's what it's about that's really what I love to see so again thank you guys for stopping by tonight and hanging out in here putting up with me and asking the questions we'll see you guys starting tomorrow ESO beta huge test don't forget the feedback and the bugs Squish them, let them know what you like and don't like. We'll talk to you guys next Saturday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. That's when I do the regular events of ESO Recapped. 
I do these episodes early if there's some significant information that you guys need to know before the weekend gets here, and that's why I've done this early. So it's normally Saturday nights at 9.30. You guys have a good night, and we'll see you guys next Saturday. Take care. Actually, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Be back here.